<laughs> Hello, I'm John. I'm Suleika Jawad. And this is our house. Oh, and that's River. You gotta get these tiles. I'm looking at these tiles, this whole jewel box here. Right here, this little vestibule situation with the blue. It's incredible. It's like a spirit when you come in the house. Oh my goodness. <laughs> come on, let's go in the living room. Okay. We were looking for a house where we could both live and create. And the very first thing that got me about this house was the incredible ceilings and more specifically the tin ceilings up there. These ceilings were falling apart, you know, like the old tin roof blues, like Pops used to say, Bob, Bob, this had the blues, it was falling <laughs> down. We also happened to get married in this very living yes, room a year ago when the house was still empty right here in front of that mantle. We sat right here in the middle afterwards and told stories underneath this recycled water bottle chandelier. The great Willie Cole is the artist who assembled this. Is what and else? I what think else? it's a good symbol of how we approach the rest of this house. So many of the pieces in here are upcycled or recycled or thrifted, and that yeah. was really important to us. This house is Tunisiana, Tunisia and Louisiana. You see, she designed this. She's a genius. This is why I love my wife. She's so incredible. But I also got to work with my dear friend, Holly Goodman, who is an extraordinary writer and designer and a fellow thrifter and scavenger of flea markets and all the places where you can find soul. We wanted objects that each tell a story, including this painting yeah. by my very own mother and these vintage posters, which belong to my grandfather. This is another thing sitting on the piano here <laughs> that I want to oh, show God. you. This is Sulaika in high school playing the double bass. That's how she looked when we met. And this is in a practice room at Juilliard. We met at the world's most awkward place, which is to say band camp. Mm -hmm. We got married in this room, and I'll never forget, it was on the eve of when I was admitted to the bone marrow transplant. Um, mm -hmm. I've been in treatment for leukemia for the last year and a half, so it made it all the more special. We had a couple of our closest friends and John surprised me with a singer. He sung Unforgettable. And, you know, I played the piano here, and it was just a beautiful thing. And that's what I like to, to do with the music part of it. You know, friends will come and we'll set the drums up right here, and the bass will be right here, and the horn players will be over there or in the kitchen or on the staircase here, and just stuff will happen that you'll just remember forever. That's what a home should be about, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we can't leave this room without addressing Mr. Elephant. The Elephant Bar, which people have very strong reactions to, either positive or negative. Address the elephant in the room. That's right. You gotta address it. Before we ever even owned a home, before that even felt like a possibility, I knew that someday I wanted to have Tunisian tiles in my home. And these were made by my friend Mokhtar. They're hand painted, hand cut, and beautifully imperfect. We love imperfections here. We love flaws, and we're always looking for the beauty in them. Be who you are, you are enough. <laughs> I also want to give a shout out to Facebook Marketplace because that's where probably 50% of the furniture in this house is from, including this table, including these chairs. And then of course the Madame. She greets us every day and she's perfectly modest. You want to talk about the pink? Yeah, the pink is just thought it matched well with the blue. I thought it felt very human and very warm. You know, you take a bold choice and sometimes it'll work out and you'll be connected to something that's really powerful within yourself and your family. Other times you make a bold choice and you just have to repaint it. So <laughs> we just went for it and I'm glad that we did. This is our guest room. It's where you will sleep. <laughs> 
if, if by the end of the night everything is still copacetic. This is an old bed I found in rural New Jersey and we had it repainted. This is a chair we found in upstate New York in my hometown. So this is a you very special gramophone mm -hmm. from the color purple film set that was gifted to us by the one and only. Oh, that's Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. No big deal. And this is my beautiful bass. Play some. So what the This is one of my very favorite bathrooms in the house. It has these beautiful zelic tiles that remind me of a hammam that you might find in North Africa. And we've got this beautiful salvage sink and beautiful salvage old school tub. And the most important detail, which is a very niche problem, and that's when your husband wins many, many Grammys, you run out of places to put them in the house. So we've got one here to make our guests smile. I always think that this bathroom feels like King Tut's bathroom. <laughs> you know, that's the vibe. Welcome to my office and to my painting studio. Everything about this room is very personal to me, from the salvaged tiles to the weird little objects that I've collected over time that inspire me and my paintings. And then the most important piece de résistance is the giant fainting couch where I do a lot of writing and reading and most importantly, napping. I think it's important to note that all of these Sulaika originals were painted in a hospital bed and were inspired by visions, almost fever dreams that she was having. So to see them displayed here is also a story of triumph. The thing that she overcame, she almost um, in a way painted her way through it. And that's an incredible testament to her art, but also just the transcendence of that moment. You know, in this house, we really believe that survival is its own kind of creative process. Frida Kahlo has been an inspiration to me as someone who lives with chronic illness. I'm really inspired by the way that she took her own circumstances and found creative workarounds for them. She would paint from bed with an easel that was gifted to her by her mom and that she used as a kind of lap desk. And so I do a version of that. I have my own lap desk and I work horizontal a lot of the time. And this desk, is really special to me. It was a gift from John. It belonged to one of my writer heroes, Joan Didion. But I also really believe in contagion magic, which is the idea that objects are imbued with their own stories and their own magic. It's my prized possession. It's also just something that I would have picked out of a thrift store and fallen in love with regardless. You see, what I love about the dressing room is that you have so much space and we have so many items of clothing and shoes. I never had this growing up. So it was just a storm in my closet. <laughs> it was just everything, everywhere. And, you know, I organized it as best I could. But, you know, this is an incredible experience to have this. You know, this is this is truly a gift. So when we first moved in, John said he wanted a piano in every single room, and we did our very best. So we've got this tiny little instrument. What's it called again, John? It's a chalice. And our theme for the year was family and freedom. So that's what's on there. Mm-hmm. 
for bath people, we like to take a bath every night. And my favorite part about this bathtub is that the tub is directly under the skylight. And so when the moon is really bright, you can actually see it from the tub. And you can do that if you so wish. <laughs> Nighttime routine involves reading. And I also love this little lounge chair where we get to hang out. But more than anything, it involves cuddling with our dog. Yeah, this is a pretty much sleep zone. You know, try to keep it like that. There's an incredible feeling when you can come to a place and it's instructing you what it wants you to do. And you got to keep the energy like that. And we'd be remiss if we left this room without talking about this baby, which is an old screen door that I found in a salvage yard in Pennsylvania and very precariously strapped to the top of my car. And we threw a mirror behind it. And the person who put the mirror behind it described it as a beautiful ghost, which I love. It's levels. Oh, come on. Just get a shot of that. It's got vibe. Just take a deep breath, drink water. Yeah, so you guys, if you want some water, we got this incredible area over here. This is the kitchenette that is outside of the studio lounge. As you can see here, we have cups and we have bowls and we have vinyl. In particular, I always wanted to have a studio lounge with a cookie oven because Baking is really cool. And John is far too humble to point this out, but obviously we've got all of his accolades in his favorite space, which so, is the kitchenette. So Laika placed all of these trophies. <laughs> and, you know, I'm grateful for them, but I, I, um, I find them everywhere. They change position constantly. <laughs> I like to surprise him, so I put things in funny places to make him laugh. I was trying to act as if they were always there for the camera, <laughs> but I saw them and I was like, oh snap, there they go. So that's them. <laughs> this is the lounge. This is where we participate in very deep conversation or we'll have a, a movie night over here. I will, you know, I'll play games. I'm a gamer, I'm addicted. And I've played games from Final Fantasy VII, which I believe is the greatest video game ever made. You know, I, that's a bold claim. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> There's many things that exist here that happen in this space and relaxation is chief among them. We just come down and cool out from the studio. We wanna decompress, wanna listen to some of the music, listen to some vinyl, read some books, an incredible collection of literature that inspires me. Yeah, this is a library of black excellence. Basically, if you look at every single author or subject of these books, you'll find black excellence and that's something that's really important. Sulaika so obviously has these ideas that she sees in her mind's eye and I have ideas and we're trying to figure out how to connect them. And this room is really a manifestation of so many of our ideas coming together and finding harmony and you know, I'm very, very proud of it. All right, AD, yeah. it's been fun. Scott. We'll see you later. Jazz. <laughs> Skittles. Yeah. All right. Go home. I hope you didn't forget your shoes. River, come on. Come on. All right. 